This is an action-packed film that was delayed for 10 years before hitting the big screen. Back then, many people were only interested in the special effects and overlooked the grand scenes and characters in the story. It brings back unforgettable memories for me. A single slogan of For the Horde could stop the youthful enthusiasm of the 80s and 90s. Warlocks, humans, orcs, mages, half-orcs, and elves are all featured in this film. It almost gathers all the elements of fantasy. Even now, the film's special effects are still unmatched by many big productions. It's not an exaggeration to say that it rivals the Warcraft game trilogy. Daniel Wu's portrayal of the main antagonist Gul'dan is outstanding, and he sacrifices his looks to fully embody the character. Without further ado, let's delve into the plot. The story begins with the Orc Horde preparing to invade the human planet. Their chieftain, Gul'dan, possesses fell magic, which requires him to continuously drain the lives of countless Draenor beings to sustain himself leading to the impending destruction of their world. To obtain more life essence, he decides to lead the strongest warriors from various tribes and use his fell magic to open a portal, invading the human world of Azeroth. One of these warriors is Durotan, the chieftain of the Frostwolf clan, who is determined to find a new homeland for his tribe. The night before the expedition, he is restless, worrying about his pregnant wife. Durotan decides to secretly bring his wife along to Azeroth without informing the other tribes. The next morning, Durotan and the bald warrior, Orgrim Doomhammer, carrying their belongings, arrive at the assembly point. Orgrim Doomhammer is a legendary hero known as the Destroyer, also from the Warcraft universe. With the sound of the horn, warriors from each tribe gather outside the portal. The imprisoned Drenii are about to become fuel for Gul'dan to open the portal, and one of them desperately pleads with the woman next to him to let go of his child. This alluring half-orc woman is Garona, another legendary character from the Warcraft world. As a half-breed, she has suffered mistreatment from the orcs and has been long imprisoned by Gul'dan, since she is fluent in various languages. Gul'dan keeps her by his side for translation purposes. Gul'dan begins a passionate pre-war mobilization speech. The anticipation for the new homeland is overwhelming among the tribes, and the atmosphere becomes heated instantaneously, igniting a wave of excitement. As Gul'dan stretches out his hands, countless lives of the Drenii are drained, and the desperate Drenii perish in agonizing cries. Gul'dan hurls the absorbed energy at the portal, revealing a vibrant continent on the other side. Eagerly, the orcs rush forward and enter the portal one after another. Unlike the others, Durotan doesn't feel the same excitement. His pregnant wife is about to step onto the battlefield. In the void of the timeless tunnel, Durotan's wife suddenly experiences intense pain in her belly. Anxiously concerned, Durotan tries to step forward to help, but there is no solid ground to support him. He can only watch helplessly as his wife endures the excruciating pain and slowly falls. Accompanied by a bright light that gradually dissipated, they were successfully transported to the world inhabited by humans. The intense pain made Durotan's wife immediately remove her equipment and hurriedly try to climb to the side to give birth to the child. When Durotan rushed over to help, he was intercepted by the Horde's deputy leader, Black Hand the Destroyer. Black Hand intends to investigate Durotan for secretly bringing the burden to Azeroth. Fortunately, Gul'dan discovered the situation and instead of blaming Durotan, he helped his wife deliver the baby with a powerful roar from his wife. The little life had arrived in this world. However, due to the unfamiliar environment, the fragile little life was struggling. As the first orc born in the human world, it held profound significance for the first orc expedition. Gul'dan believed that this child would have an extraordinary future, so he was willing to do anything to save him. Gul'dan performed a fell energy extraction on the child, then transferred the energy into the baby. Gul'dan lifted the child high, adding morale to the horde. And this child is none other than the great orc leader who echoes throughout the Warcraft world, Thrall. Seeing this, it is only the beginning of the Warcraft world, in the distant Dwarven Kingdom of Ironforge. Another heroic figure is having a meeting with the Dwarven King. He is the renowned High Commander of the Humans, Lothar. Today happens to mark the 100th anniversary of the alliance between the Dwarves and Humans. The Dwarven Kingdom, known for its expertise in technological advancements, presents its latest research achievement, the Rifle. As a gift to Lothar, just as they are about to demonstrate the power of the rifle, a Dwarven guard hurriedly arrives with a frontline report to deliver. The report stated that one of Lothar's garrisons was attacked by unidentified creatures. Without much time for pleasantries, Lothar immediately rushed back to Stormwind City with Khadgar to inspect the fallen bodies. Khadgar was extremely shocked when he witnessed the rare fell energy emanating from their mouths. 
He expressed that the situation was beyond his capabilities and that they needed to summon the human guardian, Madiv, to provide an explanation, however, the prerequisite for summoning the guardian was only within the king's authority. Lothar and Khadgar embarked on a journey day and night to find King Lane in the town of Gold's Hire. Khadgar informed the king about the severity of the situation and emphasized the urgent need to visit Karazin and invite the guardian to assist them, just as the words left his mouth. Flames shot up into the sky from the southeast direction of Elwyn Forest, indicating another garrison had been attacked. The king's expression immediately turned grave. With the situation becoming critical, the king removed his signet ring and handed it to Lothar, instructing him to swiftly travel to Karazin and summon the guardian, Madiv. For a discussion, the griffins outside the house had long been waiting. Lothar invited Khadgar to accompany him, and the two of them mounted the griffins, Flying from night until dawn, the journey that would normally take three days was completed in just one day with the assistance of the Griffins. The old steward had been waiting outside the house for a while. This grand structure hidden amidst the mountains appeared incredibly sacred. After the old steward learned about the situation, he led Lothar upstairs to meet with Mediv. Our king summons you. Who's the boy downstairs? Since Khadgar was only an apprentice mage, he had to remain in the library. Suddenly, a wraith appeared beside him, but as he approached to examine it, it vanished into thin air. In the depths of his being, a magic book was calling out to him, and the Dalaran symbol on his arm was constantly guiding him. Following the symbol's prompts, Khadgar took out the renowned book, the Book of Mediv, which had played a pivotal role in his magical journey. Returning this time didn't require the hassle of a griffin. With a forceful swing of Mediv's arm, a blue magic portal formed. When the blue light disappeared in an instant, only the familiar old steward remained. The three of them appeared in the Grand Hall of Stormwind City, startling the guards who immediately went on guard. Upon seeing Mediv's arrival, King Lane's face lit up with a smile. Without much pleasantries, they immediately gathered around the sand table in the hall for a discussion. However, they had no idea what kind of creatures were attacking humans. They unanimously decided to embark on a journey to Elwyn Forest for investigation. Accompanied by several guards, they arrived in the forest. The scenes of the recent attacks lay in ruins on both sides of the road, prompting them to conduct an on-site inspection. Fresh bloodstains on the rocks indicated that the attacks had occurred recently. Mediv looked in astonishment at the fell energy still burning on the trees, wearing an expression of disbelief. Just as Khadgar was about to examine a peculiar corpse, a heavy hammer struck down one of the soldiers. In the midst of chaos, everyone quickly picked up their weapons and prepared for defense. Blackhand let out a furious roar and called forth his prepared minions to surround them, facing the towering and powerful orcs. The humans were like lambs to the slaughter. Even their armor couldn't withstand the weight of the heavy hammers. Khadgar, casting his magic, was spotted by the arriving Lothar. Once again, Khadgar used his magic to create a shield to block Duraton's attacks and urgently called for Mediv to come to their aid. In the chaos, only Lothar could match the orcs, and Blackhand even lifted a horse high and smashed it onto the crowd. In the midst of this, Mediv began rapidly channeling his magic. Facing the ferocious orcs with their sharp fangs, the soldiers started to falter. Lothar's son was on the brink of death, but he was relieved when his father arrived in time to rescue him. Just as Lothar was reprimanding his son, Blackhand seized the opportunity and ambushed him from behind. Throwing him aside, Lothar's sword was knocked away, and his black hand closed in step by step. Lothar remembered the rifle that the Dwarf King had given him as a gift. He never expected it to be so powerful. Blackhand owes his name to Lothar. At this moment, Mediva's magic had finished its incantation. With his hands raised high, a web of lightning struck the orcs with incredible speed and accuracy. However, the magic emitted was able to corrupt the orcs' bodies. Blackhand recognized the power of this dark magic and quickly organized the orcs to retreat from the scene. <laughs> After casting his spell, Mediv sensed that something was wrong, he felt an evil force controlling his body. Quickly taking Khadgar's staff, he opened a portal and returned to Karazin to recover. Due to the limited understanding of orcs by humans, it was crucial to capture one alive for further research. Lothar swiftly organized the remaining forces for pursuit. Seeing the humans closing in, the orcs decided not to flee anymore. They immediately dismounted and began commanding their pets into battle. <laughs> War wolves darted through the forest to intercept the soldiers who were hastily approaching. 
knocking them down. The enraged orc confronting Lothar charged forward. Undeterred by being outnumbered, ordinary attacks had little effect against the towering and powerful orc. Lothar seized the opportunity, allowing his warhorse to kick the orc and swiftly approached him, delivering a punch that knocked him unconscious. While Lothar was observing the orc, his steed returned, attempting to rescue its master, faced with a massive war wolf. Lothar chose not to engage in reckless combat. He directly threatened the loyal war wolf with his sword, using his own life as leverage. As expected, the loyal war wolf let out a fierce howl, venting its anger before choosing to depart. Meanwhile, Corona, a half orc recently freed by Durotan, happened to encounter Khadgar while fleeing in chaos. Khadgar immediately chanted a spell, immobilizing her on a tree. This seductive half-orc was also a legendary figure in the world of Warcraft. As a half-orc and half-dreamy eye, she had always been mistreated by orcs. Having just arrived in the human world, she was now captured by humans. Surprisingly, this half-orc could speak the human language, which intrigued Lothar standing nearby. However, the nearby orc considered speaking the human language an insult to the orcs. Infuriated, he struggled fiercely to break free and kill Garona, but Lothar intervened just in time to stop his reckless action. Garona was brought before the king in the Grand Hall to undergo soul questioning. It was her first time in the human world, and she was unfamiliar with human etiquette. Facing the new environment, she was filled with curiosity, even showing her inherent wildness before the king, pointing to the map on the ceiling. The king asked her to identify the orc's place of origin. Garona clearly told the king that she did not belong to this world. The orcs came to the continent of Azeroth by opening a portal with Gul'dan's fell magic. Garona informed them that a large number of orcs were gradually occupying human territories. King Lane offered her a highly enticing condition. He promised her the freedom to enjoy rights in the human world if she helped the humans locate the orc's stronghold. Garona grew up in the scorn and imprisonment of the Horde and freedom was a profound desire for her. However, due to her traumatizing experiences, Garona was hesitant to easily believe the king's promise, to demonstrate his sincerity. King Lane arranged for the queen, who understood women's hearts, to comfort and reassure Garona. He even directly presented her with a royal dagger for self-defense, which finally alleviated Garona's concerns and opened her heart. This also made her feel a sense of belonging to the human race for the first time. Durotan and Blackhand hurried back to the Horde and informed Gul'dan of the situation. However, Gul'dan indiscriminately accused Blackhand, believing that he had tarnished the honor of the orcs by fleeing in panic during the battle. Gul'dan insisted on judging Blackhand and sacrificing his life as a warning to others, which greatly displeased the other orcs. But in the face of the evil Gul'dan, they had no choice but to swallow their grievances. Watching his former comrade on the verge of a life-ending judgment, Durotan couldn't bear the guilt in his heart. Even if it meant offending Gul'dan, he had to intervene and save Black Hand. Dare interrupt this judgment. We fought hard. Their warlock, use your fell against us. He resolutely stood up and confronted Gul'dan, stating that the orcs came to Azeroth only for survival. While war might be unavoidable, he would never allow the different races to turn against each other. He hoped that Gul'dan could change his evil ways. Gul'dan appeared outwardly patient but harbored deep resentment, secretly determined to eliminate Durotan. That night, Durotan found it difficult to sleep. He knew that he had offended Gul'dan and would face retaliation. Looking at his newborn son in his hands, he fell into deep contemplation. Faced with Gul'dan's reckless actions towards the Orsish people, they would inevitably become his pawns. Durotan secretly made a decision to do something for his people. The next morning, Durotan confided his thoughts to his trusted brother-in-arms, Orgrim Doomhammer. Since the first wave of orcs came through the portal to the continent of Azeroth, they have successfully occupied wetlands Menethil Harbor and Earthy Highlands Stromgard Keep, securing a foothold in Azeroth. However, Durotan discovered that wherever Gul'dan went, the land would wither and decay. The corrupted Gul'dan had become increasingly evil. If they wanted to establish a stable home in their new land, they had to stop Gul'dan. Durotan had devised a plan and decided to join forces with the humans to eliminate Gul'dan. At the same time, Garona led a group, including Lothar, to search for the orcs' gathering place. On their journey, Khadgar remained focused on studying his Book of Mediv, while Lothar noticed many humans being held captive by orcs. Garona informed Lothar that Gul'dan constantly absorbed life energy and planned to use it in two days to open a portal. At that time, the rest of the orcs would be transported to Azeroth. Just as Lothar left the scouting area, Durotan discovered their group. He swiftly covered Khadgar's mouth from behind, preventing him from casting any spells. Then, 
He asked Garona to help convey his grand plan to the humans, he expressed his desire to join forces with the humans to eliminate Gul'dan, and he arranged to meet with the human leader on the Blackrock Mountain before sunset. Garona agreed to the request on behalf of the Horde, and she hoped to join the Frostwolf clan after the success of their plan. However, Durodin believed that she would be safer in the human world. Today, he led the Frostwolf clan to the Dark Tanyan Pass early, while the human army led by King Lane positioned themselves on the other side. Here, humans and orcs engaged in their first cooperative conversation. To ensure the safety of the meeting, Durotin instructed his trusted brother-in-arms, Orgrim Doomhammer, to patrol the rear. The human guardian, Mediv, also arrived early at the highest point of the canyon, constantly monitoring the situation to ensure King Lane's safety. Since the half-orc Garona was fluent in the human language, she served as the communication bridge throughout the meeting. Durotin expressed his determination to eliminate Gul'dan to the king, who naturally agreed with him on this point. Just as they were about to reach an agreement, an unexpected event occurred. Gul'dan's ambush of orcs launched a sudden attack. The conversation between the two sides was interrupted, and King Lane swiftly organized his members to begin evacuating. The sudden turn of events left Durotin speechless. When he turned to look at King Lane, he saw a look of extreme anger in his eyes. Durotin felt frustrated but had no choice but to direct his anger towards the enemy in front of him. As the humans hurriedly retreated, they fell victim to the ambush set by Gul'dan's prepared forces. They soon realized that more enemies were blocking their path. The situation instantly descended into chaos as they were overwhelmed by the enemy's onslaught. Lothar's horse was toppled by oncoming enemies, forcing him to confront them head-on. A roar from a fierce wolf caught Garona's attention. It turned out that Blackhand and Doomhammer were commanding the enemy's movements from a higher position. They had discovered that the meeting was a trap. Thanks to a message sent by Doomhammer to Gul'dan. Lothar swiftly organized the remaining forces to launch an attack against the enemy. King Lane, setting aside his status, joined the battle as well. Garona, the half-orc, unleashed her rage without mercy against her own kind. Garona. At that moment, the orc chieftain Blackhand joined the battlefield. Lothar's son quickly organized soldiers to form a shield formation to defend against Blackhand's attacks. With a furious roar from Black Hand, numerous orcs swarmed from the passageway. It was evident that this ambush was well prepared. In the face of the urgent situation, the Guardian Mediv swiftly began casting magic, unleashing elemental forces and summoning lightning. His eyes gleamed as he tightly gripped the lightning and struck the battlefield. A lightning barrier descended from the sky, separating the humans and the orcs. Due to the strain of releasing such powerful magic, Mediv collapsed to the ground at that moment. King Lane immediately ordered a hasty retreat. Lothar, in order to buy time for everyone to escape, stayed on the battlefield to hold off the enemy. When he regained his senses, he realized that his son was on the opposite side. He quickly called out to Mediv to dispel the spell. Take it down! He endured the pain caused by the electricity and urged his son to hold on. For the sake of Azeroth, he had long disregarded his own life and death. Lothar picked up a shield from the ground and desperately rushed towards the electric barrier, trying to rescue his son. However, the powerful voltage once again repelled Lothar, leaving him helplessly watching his son fight for his life in the midst of the crisis. As he saw Black Hand, with his menacing teeth and ferocious appearance, about to harm his son, Lothar showed a helpless expression, seemingly pleading with Black Hand to spare him. However, Black Hand had no mercy in his heart. He ruthlessly impaled Lothar's son with his claw and lifted him high, smashing him against the electric barrier. In that moment, it felt as though Lothar's heart had been pierced. Lothar struggled to stand firm and looked at his son lying unconscious on the ground. When he turned to face his opponent again, he was met with Black Hand's taunting gaze. An overwhelming fury surged within Lothar as he rapidly brewed a deep-seated grudge that would one day be repaid twofold. After the battle subsided, the group returned to Karazin with the unconscious Mediv and placed him in a pool of magical water for treatment. Khadgar noticed that Mediv's eyes emitted a green glow, realizing that his body had been corrupted by fell magic. He immediately rode on a griffin to seek the help of the Archmage in Dalaran. 
Wait for me. That night, when Dorotin returned to his tent, Black Hand arrived and promptly accused him of treachery, leading to his arrest. Gul'dan, a master of manipulation, summoned the Warsong clan to his side. On the surface, he appeased Orgrim's emotions, but secretly arranged for his underlings to besiege the Frostwolf clan. A large number of orcs stormed into the Frostwolf clan's tents, beginning a massacre with the intention of wiping out the entire clan. To eliminate any opportunity for Dorotin's challenge. At this point, Orgrim finally realized that he had been manipulated by Gul'dan. He urgently rushed to join the camp to fight against the orcs and exterminate them. He immediately rushed into Dorotin's tent, and only after seeing Dorotin's wife and child unharmed did he breathe a sigh of relief. However, Dorotin's wife was extremely resentful of Orgrim's betrayal, and Orgrim accepted the reality with resignation, but it was not the time to vent their emotions, they had to make her leave with the child immediately. You should have trusted in your chieftain. <laughs> Guilt-ridden, Orgrim watched them gradually move away before finally feeling at ease. After letting the mother and child go, he quickly arrived at the place where Dorotin was being held captive. He killed the two guards who were watching over Dorotin and opened the cell. Guilt-ridden, Orgrim couldn't bring himself to look directly at Dorotin, silently. He squatted down and helped him untie the ropes. Orgrim didn't say much, but directly reached out his hand to lift Dorotin up, symbolizing his apology. However, Dorotin responded in the manner of a true man and struck back with a punch, representing forgiveness. I am sorry, Dorotin. I did not see how we could side with the humans. It's our own kind. Dorotin pulled him up, choosing not to hold grudges against his good brother. After ensuring the safety of his family, Dorotin openly declared that he would challenge Gul'dan for honor. Dorotin put on the Frostwolf Clan's battle robe in front of everyone and launched a challenge against Gul'dan. Chieftain of the Frostwolf Clan, and I am here. However, Gul'dan accepted his honorable challenge. He slowly removed his own robe, revealing the spikes on his back. Dorotin, in his pre-battle preparations, took off his Frost Wolf battle robe, revealing muscles even stronger than that of a bull. He swiftly charged towards the battlefield and threw the first punch. In a direct confrontation, it was clear that Gul'dan was no match for Dorotin. Dorotin even forcefully broke the spikes on Gul'dan's back. The intense pain made Dorotin exert all his strength to throw Dorotin away. Seizing the opportunity, Gul'dan quickly launched a counterattack, even attempting to use fell magic against Dorotin. However, hesitating for a few seconds in front of his people, Gul'dan stopped the duel, using the opening of the portal as an excuse. I have no time for this, Black Hand! But Black Hand, serving as the referee, decisively refused him. Orcs highly respected ancient traditions and would not favor either side in a duel of honor. Keep fighting! Unexpectedly, Gul'dan shamelessly used fell magic against Dorotin, he didn't care about honor at all, and he wasn't even afraid of the insults from other orcs, because he believed he could conquer all orcs with fell magic. You have no honor. Initially, Gul'dan wanted to preserve some dignity, but faced with Dorotin's defiant spirit, he had no choice but to continue the fight. On the other side, when Khadgar first discovered Mediva's corruption by fell magic, he immediately rushed to Karazin with Lothar to stop him. Khadgar knew that they had to defeat Mediva in order to close the portal, but they were no match for him. <laughs> Mediva even began to chant spells to control arcane constructs to attack both of them. Shut up! Khadgar planned to use the arcane constructs to counterattack Mediva while Lothar would distract Mediv and prevent him from chanting spells. Khadgar used his magic to guide the arcane construct to the edge of the magic pool, just as Mediv, now transformed into Sargeras, was enraged and walked into the magic pool, his body fully transformed. In a critical moment, Khadgar used his magic to knock down the arcane construct. Upon contact with the magical energy, the arcane construct became extremely solid, successfully suppressing Sargeras in the center of the magic pool. At the same time, the portals on the battlefield were also closed. The humans seemed to see a glimmer of hope and quickly prevented personnel from rescuing the imprisoned slaves. Although they had control over Sargeras, he had not been completely defeated. 
Khadgar used a sacrificial spell to absorb the fell magic within the div. He didn't know if he could withstand this power. So while still conscious, he released a shield to protect Lothar. Khadgar struggled to absorb all the fell magic within the div into himself. When his eyes emitted green light, he began reciting incantations to resist the fell magic. Khadgar successfully purified the fell magic within him. A powerful shockwave emanated from Karazin and spread through the Moonblade Forest. As a result, Khadgar transformed from a mere mage apprentice into a powerful archmage. After confirming that Khadgar was unharmed, Lothar immediately picked up his sword from the ground. Without even putting on his shoes, he jumped out of the window and rushed to the battlefield to aid King Lane in the fight. When Mediv regained consciousness, his life force was already extremely weak. As the guardian of humanity, even in his final moments, he still thought of protecting his people. Using his last bit of strength, he struggled to utter the word Stormwind City from his mouth. The portal on the battlefield immediately began to show the image of Stormwind City. King Lane saw hope in this moment, and the morale of the warriors soared as they started converging towards the portal to rescue more captives. King Lane personally stood guard outside the portal, while Garona and others went to rescue more prisoners, knowing they didn't have much time for their retreat. As Medivh's will gradually weakened, he shed a tear of guilt while desperately holding on, just as the last wave of civilians escaped the battlefield. The portal slowly disappeared from the battlefield. King Lane understood that he had lost his guardian, Mediv, who couldn't hold on any longer, departed from this world with a sense of guilt. Due to King Lane's delay in evacuating the civilians while trying to rescue them, the remaining humans on the battlefield were in great danger. Black Hand, driven by personal glory, hastily charged towards King Lane. Defeating the king would earn him the highest honor and respect among the orcs. King Lane knew that the situation was dire and ordered Garona to kill him in exchange for honor and position, creating an opportunity for an alliance between humans and orcs. As Black Hand was about to reach the king, Garona, reluctantly and with a heavy heart, had no better choice. She endured the pain and stabbed the king from behind. Garona received glory and was lifted high by the orcs, who began celebrating. As Black Hand tossed the king's body into the orc crowd, Lord Lothar descended from the sky riding a griffin, fearlessly slaying the enemies before him. Under the protection of the griffin, Lothar found King Lane's body and quickly moved it onto the griffin, preparing to leave in the shortest possible time. Just as they were about to take off, Black Hand swiftly grabbed hold of the griffin's leg, firmly controlling it. It was a familiar scene, as Black Hand challenged Lothar to an honorable duel. He wanted to defeat Lothar to gain personal glory, which coincided with Lothar's desires. The memory of his son being mercilessly killed by Black Hand and the recent death of his dear friend haunted him. This blood feud demanded vengeance, and now was the perfect time to settle the score. In a swift charge, the battle between Lothar and Black Hand began but it ended with a single strike from Lothar, severing Black Hand's bloodline. The first blow was for his son, and the follow-up strike was for King Lane. There were no flashy moves in this battle, but its meaning was profound. In the moment of victory, Lothar only glanced at Garona before leaving the battlefield with a heavy heart. The evil Gul'dan demanded the orcs to kill Lothar, but the orcs, who respected ancient traditions, did not stop him. They believed that the victor should be respected and honored, so they began making way for Lothar to pass. At this moment, Gul'dan's authority among the orcs greatly diminished, and none of the orcs present paid any attention to him. Lothar rode the griffin, carrying King Lane's body, and hurried back to Stormwind City. Meanwhile, Orgrim Doomhammer pulled out the fangs of Durotan, preparing to give them to his son, Thrall. Thrall! 